This video presentation describes several popular salt and sea import export proposals, often known as sea to sea proposals. For more information about the Salt and Sea and the Pacific Institute's work, please visit www.pacinst.org. The Salt and Sea is a massive salt lake in the California desert, about 90 miles northwest of San Diego, 35 miles southeast of Palm Springs, and 35 miles north of the U.S. Mexico border. The lake's surface is currently more than 234 feet below sea level. Farmers in the region use Colorado River water to irrigate their fields. Drainage from these fields flows into the lake, adding water, but also many tons of salt and fertilizer. A complicated set of agreements signed in 2003 transfer some of the Colorado River water from the Imperial Valley to San Diego. In the past decade, the lake has lost more than a million acre feet in volume, more than 14%, and its surface area has already fallen more than six feet. Salinity has increased dramatically. About 17,000 acres of lake bed are now exposed. Because of the water transfer agreement with San Diego and other factors, the rate of change at the Salton Sea will soon reach a tipping point as shown in this graph. For the next two years, the lake will change gradually. Then it will enter a 10 to 12 year period of very rapid change where elevation drops 20 feet and salinity triples before elevation stabilizes again. This is a different way of looking at the previous graph. The lake was at the dark blue extent as recently as April 2005. It currently is about the size of the light blue shape and could be at the tomato soup shape in 15 years, exposing more than 100 square miles of lake bed. These changes, if nothing is done at the Salton Sea, will lead to massive dust storms that will harm people in the area. These changes will also destroy the habitat for most of the birds that currently use the Salton Sea. These dramatic changes have encouraged people to look for solutions. When talking about possible solutions, it's important to keep the very large size of the Salton Sea in mind. The sea is so large that any realistic solution will also need to be quite large and expensive. For many years, people have suggested that the answer to the Salton Sea's problems is as straightforward as bringing in water from the Pacific Ocean or the Gulf of California. Over the years, many such sea to sea plans have emerged. The general concept of these plans is shown here. There are two main routes for such plans. One, shown here in yellow, would bring in water from the Pacific Ocean. There are several variations on this concept, but the general idea is to pump water over the coastal range and put it into the Salton Sea. To make this work, a lot of water would also need to be pumped up from the Salton Sea and discharged somewhere, probably back out to the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean route would run 100 miles with more than 3,600 feet of elevation gain. One of the main benefits of this route is that it would not require any negotiations with Mexico, though it would trigger California Coastal Commission oversight. Moving heavy ocean water up this much would require roughly the same amount of energy generated by the now closed San Onofre nuclear plant. Some portion of this energy could be recaptured on the downhill side, but because such systems are not perfectly efficient, a great deal of new energy would be required. Ocean water is also very corrosive, so maintenance costs would be high. Extrapolating from an estimate prepared by the Bureau of Reclamation in 1998, the total cost for this route would exceed $1 billion every year, in addition to the initial $40 billion capital cost. A different route, shown here in orange, would bring in water from the Gulf of California. There are several variations of this route. The one shown here would run through the Laguna Salada, a dry, salty lake bed just west of the Kukapa mountain range. Running water through the Laguna Salada means it would pick up lots of new salts from that lake bed. This route avoids the major challenge of running a canal or pipeline through the city of Mexicali and the irrigated fields in the Mexicali Valley, but faces a slight elevation gain of about 270 feet just north of the border. 
Some have suggested that this route could have a large canal that could accommodate pleasure boats. Any route through Mexico would require extensive international negotiations with unknown additional costs and requirements. The Gulf of California route would need to run at least 160 miles to avoid the boundaries of the Biosphere Reserve and the re refuge for the endangered Baquita porpoise. One of the main benefits of this route is that it would require much less energy to pump water. This is slightly offset by the higher salinity found in the upper gulf, meaning that more water would need to be exchanged with the Salton Sea. The strong tides in the upper gulf could also complicate import and export infrastructure. As suggested by its name, the Salton Sea has a salt problem. It is currently about 50% saltier than the ocean and getting saltier every day. The rivers that flow into the lake aren't very salty, but because they bring in so much water, they dump almost 4 million tons of salt into the lake every year. Adding ocean water to raise the lake level would add tens of millions of tons of additional salt. To reduce lake salinity, you'd have to pump millions of acre feet of salty lake water up and out and dispose of it somewhere else. To balance the salt load, you'd have to import about 2.8 million acre feet of ocean water and export about 2.1 million acre feet every year until salinity dropped to the target level. For perspective, 2.1 million acre feet is about as much water as the entire county of San Diego uses in four years. Some have suggested adding desalination to sea to sea plans to eliminate the need to pump water back out of the lake. This is an image of the inside of Reclamation's Yuma desalting plant. Building a desalting plant costs hundreds of millions of dollars and requires a lot of energy to run. You have to pump about two gallons of ocean water through the plant to produce one gallon of high quality water, and then you have to dispose of the other gallon of very salty water. One C to C plan calls for the construction of seven Carlsbad style desalination plants to create 400,000 acre feet of pure water every year. This would cost about $6 billion. It would require about 270 megawatts of energy, almost 50% of the existing geothermal capacity in the Imperial Valley. One of the real challenges at the Salton Sea is how quickly changes will occur there. Remember that within 15 years, the surface of the Salton Sea will fall by 20 feet. One of the major problems with sea to sea plans is how long they will take to show results. This very ambitious timeline shows the problems. At best, it would take at least 10 years to design, permit, bid, fund, and execute contracts for projects of this massive size, as well as an unknown amount of time to negotiate a treaty with Mexico if that route is selected. Construction of a 160 mile canal and related structures could easily take a decade. And then it would take another decade for the project to stabilize the elevation of the lake. Salinity would drop very quickly with the addition of ocean water and the removal of salty lake water, but it would take at least a decade for the lake surface to stabilize. You could add more pipelines to raise the lake surface more quickly, but then you'd have a lot of stranded assets once the target level was met. As shown here, it would take 30 years or more to meet the project objectives. Quite simply, we don't have that kind of time. As listed in this slide, there are many, many problems with C2C plans. One of the biggest problems, though, is that C2C plans distract attention from feasible, practical plans that can be built quickly and can show results in the near future. We need to support plans that can work. Although C2C plans are intuitive and appealing, they are not the answer to the imminent collapse of the Salton Sea.